And of all of the ski towns that I've been to, mm -hmm. I can say that this is the best one that I've been to. Mm. And I've been to like Vail and... Yeah, all the Colorado ones. Yeah, all the Colorado ones. Yeah. And a bunch of ski towns in Switzerland, so... If you're coming to the Alps, a really good spot to come. the French Alps and we're so excited to be here. I was honestly super bummed looking at the weather forecast because it showed rain every day, but the weather forecast that I was looking at was like the weather app on my iPhone, which is not accurate. You want to look at the mountain forecast um, as opposed to Chamonix, the town. So it looks like we might get three nice days out of our five full days here. It looks like one day is going to snow, heavy snow. So that'll actually be really cool to see. But we spent the last like hour and a half planning out our days here. So what we're going to do now is go collect our Mont Blanc multi-pass. We bought a three-day non-consecutive multi-pass which allows us to ride the buses here to get on some gondolas cable cars and trains I do believe that the summer season ended September 12th so we're just a few days late it's September 16th today so some of the cable cars and gondolas have already closed but that's okay because we can still hike to some of the things we want to see it's just gonna take us longer to get there because we won't have the cable cars or the gondolas to help us get part way there so we're gonna go collect the pass today and then get some groceries. So we'll have things to take with us on the hike. And then um, we'll get to explore more of Chamonix, the town itself, which is super cute. It is um, just an amazing little ski town. And it's exactly what you would think a ski town should look like. And we can do a room tour here later because this hotel that we're staying at is super nice. We should have done the room tour before we unpacked, and now we have spread out all of our junk yeah. everywhere. It's the reality of travel, <laughs> it's okay. Chamonix has this pretty long pedestrian and shopping street lined with all kinds of shops and restaurants and things like that because there's a lot of, I guess, celebrities and rich people that come here. So there's like some pretty high-end shops. So we've seen, you know, North Face and Polo Ralph Lauren and all kinds of high-end shopping. So pretty good spot to, to buy some stuff if you're interested in that. So you want to go paragliding? Yes, I've been paragliding before and it's awesome. So there's this show called The Amazing Race. I think everybody knows what that amazing no, race is. No, not everybody. A lot of people don't know what The Amazing Race is. Really? So one of the things that they did on the show that's been ingrained in my memory is paragliding in Chamonix. That's the first time I had heard of Chamonix and they went paragliding in the winter so you could see all of the uh, snow on the mountains. Obviously it's not winter, but I still think it'd be a really cool thing to do if we have time and if the weather cooperates. So we'll see. So, yeah, all I did was I bought the Mont Blanc multi-pass online. It sent a QR code to my email. I came up here, scanned it, and then the tickets just popped out. Huh. It's quite useful. So you can collect it even when the actual like ticket office, because this ticket office looks closed right now. That's what so. it looks like. And so it says three, I guess, out of seven days, ending on September 23rd, adult. How much was it total? It was 88.80 euro, plus they charged us a three euro fee for not having this card. Oh, for like a convenience fee, basically? No, no, no. This card costs th an additional three euros. So do we get it back if we give it back to them? No, <laughs> Damn but it. you can keep it if you ever come back to Chamonix and you won't have to pay three euro. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like we're coming back to Chamonix. 
I really, really like Chamonix as a town so far, and we've only been here for like two hours. It just feels much nicer than the little towns that we were in Switzerland. Yeah, we were in Switzerland like two months ago, and the towns there aren't as lively. There's not as many like shops, which is good and bad, right? So the good thing is it's less like touristy, less or more laid back, um, but as Whereas here, there's more shops, more restaurants, and just a lot. There's just more facilities. Yeah, a lot of things. So it just feels, and it's, for us, it's like a better combination of mountains and nature, plus having like a nice little charming town. And of all of the ski towns that I've been to, mm -hmm. I can say that this is the best one that I've been to. Mm -hmm. And I've been to like Vail and... Yeah, um, all the Colorado ones. Yeah, all the Colorado ones. Yeah and obviously a bunch of ski towns in Switzerland, so. If you're coming to the Alps, a really good spot to come. Another good tip is that we actually visited the tourism office, which is located in the center of town, and they've actually was very helpful. You they get, were like, very helpful. They were very helpful. You can get a little booklet um, of all the different things to, to do and see. Um, they'll give you like times and especially like right now in the shoulder season, they know exactly which cable cars and what things are open or not. Yeah, definitely, definitely visit them if you want some more information about what to do and see around here. Brownies, gluten-free. I might get it. This place has the most coffee machines that I've ever seen in any store, including like some of the highest stores in the U.S. We stopped at this little coffee shop cafe. It's not little. It's a, it's actually a big like coffee roaster, and we're just getting our four dinner drinks. They had some gluten free pastry options, so we got both of those. This coffee shop looks legit, like legit. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys know this about me, but I really like coffee, and I have a lot of coffee making things, and I keep buying coffee making things, which Melissa doesn't really like that much because I have too much stuff in the house, in the kitchen, and it's just messy, and it's everywhere. But in there, this place has the most coffee making accessories. Like, I think they have like almost everything known to man, how to make coffee. They have like Chemex, like espresso machines, like AeroPress, like filtered coffee, all kinds of crazy stuff. But this place, legit. It's like the most coffee things I've ever seen in any store. We just stopped by the supermarket, which is actually very convenient because it's just outside our hotel. But now we didn't see any sandwiches in the supermarket. So we're now trying to find a boulangerie to buy sandwiches for lunch tomorrow. But apparently all the little bakeries around here close at around 7 or 7.30 and it's like 6.45 right now. So we're frantically trying to find a place that sells sandwiches that we can bring on a hike tomorrow. We're heading to one right now. We made it just in time. So we were pleasantly surprised by the amount of selection still left. So we're gonna get two sandwiches and then like two little croissant sandwiches for breakfast. Oh, oh wow. So we got our sandwiches for tomorrow. But guys, the more important thing, it is finally clearing up. So we've been watching it for the whole afternoon and it's finally cleared up a little bit. So we have high hopes for tomorrow. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I didn't think we would see it at all in our five days here. That's what happens when you have like super low expectations. <laughs> hey, set low expectations <laughs> yeah. and then be happily surprised when they exceed them. It's so cool. <laughs> it's like so close. Yeah, and, and there's like glaciers. And to see the glacier, yeah. a giant glacier mm -hmm. like that close to town, amazing. But now we're hungry, so we're gonna go eat dinner. So we have found that a lot of restaurants you need a reservation for. We didn't plan this trip at all, so we don't have reservations anywhere. But because we're American, we eat earlier than Europeans. So as long as you get there right when it opens or just a little bit after, you should be able to get seated. Like the inside of the restaurant is fully booked, except for bar seating, but they have 
a couple tables outside and I actually like it better like it's it, like it's you know humid out here but we get this amazing view of the mountains the snow-capped mountains and the glacier so I'm not mad about it this is our view I usually don't vlog much about our dinners and meals, but I feel like this one deserved it. Really good so far. What do you think? Amazing. Muma is the place. Or Mama. I'm not sure how you describe it. But apparently we, we're obviously sitting outside next to the entrance. And you could tell that this is definitely a local's place. That a lot of the locals come here and greet the uh, wait staff by name. So everybody kind of knows each other, obviously. So it's pretty cool to see. Melissa was just saying that Chamonix is amazing because it's in the middle of the mountains, but it's not like your typical mountain town where they don't have really good food and just, you know, pretty standard like mountain fare. It has obviously like Michelin star restaurants, this restaurants, and so. Very Don't wait to come here, just come. And I think that's it for this video. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. For, for our next video. When we are gonna go hike and go to the top of the highest cable car in all of France. As always, if you like this video or found it useful, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Gives us a thumbs up if you like the sauce too. Oh.